Well, hello there. I'm back. Welcome to my new filming room. I don't know if this is going to be the permanent backdrop. I need to still shift a few things around. I think I need some lights for up here, right? I can't put any on this bit because let me just show you. That's a cupboard and this is a door. So I feel like if I sit here, it's a pretty good position for me to cover the door so that it's not in the background. I did end up shifting around my drawers to the other side of the room. I kept that on there, but these two were there in the last video. I think for now it's looking pretty cute, but I am going to get a few more decoration-y bits. I apologise for my absence recently. I think a few people thought that I was stopping YouTube and moving over to Instagram and TikTok. That is absolutely not the case. And today I'm going to be trying some makeup that I forgot existed. The first thing is this Refi primer, which is the Glow and Sculpt primer. I see people using this all the time on TikTok and I think I only used it a couple of times and oh, I don't think I was supposed to <laughs> twist the lid off. Okay. It's a pull kind of thing. Yeah, I used it a couple of times and then kind of just forgot about it. And I can't remember if I liked it particularly or not. Oh my God, the way that I see people doing this is they'll like squeeze it until it, they squeeze it until it like all comes out the sides and then roll it on their face. So, uh, okay, then I like wipe this all over my face, which actually I feel like that was way too much product. I think one of the things that maybe put me off this is the applicator. Roller balls are not my favorite kind of thing. Okay, it's not a ball, but you know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I'm just not the biggest fan of the applicator. But the primer itself to me just sort of feels like a serum. Like it feels very light. It's almost like a gel moisturizer. Doesn't feel like it's gonna stick my makeup on. It definitely doesn't make your face matte. It's a very glowing primer, but it kind of, yeah, it kind of just feels like a serum. If anybody has this and loves it, can you tell me what you like about it? Because I don't know, I still can't figure it out after just putting it on my face. I don't think you would like this if you had oily skin because it is quite slippery, but I don't know, my skin is glowing. Also, oh my God, I have a desk now in front of me, but even on the desk, I I can bet you I'm still gonna knock stuff off. It's not a very big desk. I actually think I need to get a bigger, like full on table. For my foundation, I mentioned in my declutter video about this, the NYX Born to Glow foundation. And you know what? The reason why I stopped using this and stop talking about it. It's because somebody told me at some point that this was discontinued. I don't know why they did that because I don't think it was discontinued. This is the shade vanilla and I don't have fake tan on at the moment. So let's see what I think of it. I think I would like this even more now because of my foundation preferences have changed. The Born to Glow concealer was also really nice. So far, this is looking really nice. It's light coverage, I would say. I'm just gonna see if it's buildable. Let's put on a little bit more. Oh my God, I imagine I post this and then go to check and it has been discontinued. Continued. <laughs> Color match, I think it's very nice. And yeah, it looks lovely. Very glowy. Zoom you in. I think it looks really nice. I wouldn't say it's particularly buildable. I don't think I needed that second layer. And maybe it would actually have a bit more coverage if I'd have used a brush, but I really like the way it looks on my skin. It looks really glowy, feels nice. Next is the Fenty Beauty Concealer. This is the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer. And I've got the shade 170. I'm pretty sure, actually, I don't know why. Why did I stop using this? I don't know. From what I remember, this was pretty nice. Maybe it was too matte. I know that I stopped using the Fenty foundation because it was a bit too matte for my preferences. Um, and also I started fake tanning and my shade was like really, really light. But I seem to remember it had pretty good coverage. So why did I stop using it? Yeah, it does. It has good coverage. Maybe it dried down too quick. I guess we'll find out because I've just put it all over my face. I feel like it's been ages since I posted like a sit down kind of video. Obviously I posted that declutter, but that wasn't the most chatty. I can't fault that concealer. It looks nice. Cream bronzer. This is an interesting one. The Milk Makeup Bionic Bronzer. And I know why I stopped using this. Okay. The th oh, shh. Okay. <laughs> that did not go on my joggers. Thank God that was so close because a bunch of oil just like spilled out onto me. Um, That was one reason. <laughs> if you don't use it for a while, you kind of have to remix it in the tube, which I'm not a big fan of at all. What an odd packaging for a cream bronzer. I think I don't particularly like stuff that makes a mess. Like you have to squeeze this onto the back of your your hand. Okay, why is it dripping oil on me? The thing is, I was using this for a while on the regular, not on camera. It was really nice. But then when you sort of like leave it to sit for more than a couple of days, it sort of separates into this oily texture. I want to get past that stage of the oil. Okay, there we go. We're getting some actual product out now. And then you sort of dip your brush in it like that. And then from what I can remember, let's just put some on my face. Oh, it's gone really strange into my brush. Okay, the way that it's gone into my brush is really patchy, I guess, because it was a bit patchy on my hand. But yeah, from what I can remember, it was actually a nice product, but that whole oil and the separating thing is frustrating, but it just doesn't make it very user-friendly, unfortunately, which is a shame because it blends really nicely. It's got a really nice radiant skin-like finish. It's very natural. I like the color. I don't you think that looks really nice? It's just sort of melted into my foundation. 
some on my nose. And I think it's a really nice color as well because it's a bronzer, but it's not too orange. It is just a shame that it's kind of tricky to use because it just like, it's melted really nicely into my foundation. What shame. Actually, I know that Milk do a stick form of a bronzer. Does anybody know if that one's any good? Has anybody tried that? Maybe I should give that a go because I might like that more. For my cream blush, this is one from Kiko. It's the Velvet Touch, Velvet Touch? The Velvet Touch Creamy Blush Stick in the shade 05. Wait, is this the kind of product you need to warm up first? Oh wait, no, it actually feels really creamy. Let's just go straight on my face. I truly think that Kiko is one of the most underrated brands in the UK. I know that it's very popular in Europe. I don't know, I think a lot of people don't even think to go in there or they don't even think about Kiko because it's not sold in like our main makeup stores. But they do some really nice stuff. And yeah, I completely forgot about that blush, but that is so nice. That is my perfect kind of peachy pink color, very summery. Then to add a bit of extra glow, this is something that I found the other day in my collection, again, when I was sorting out, the Made by Mitchell Champagne Spray Highlighter. If you know Made by Mitchell, the blushes are all like multi-use products. And this one specifically, I think is supposed to be like a liquid highlighter. And you know what I did the other day? I mixed this in with a cream blush or like a liquid blush and it turned out really nicely. So, ooh, it's actually really nice, but I prefer it. Oh wait, hang on. I've just realized that this is a dark highlighter and I don't have tan on, so that now looks a little bit crazy. I prefer this when I mix it in with a liquid blush, especially if you mix this with any of the Made by Mitchell matte blushes. It worked really nicely to make them into a glowy blush. Definitely more of a tan shade, but it does give a really nice glow. I like it. Also, oh my God, guys, how random is this? I had a message from Feastables, as in like Mr. Beast's chocolate brand. I have got no idea how they found me. I didn't follow them on Instagram. I follow Mr. Beast, but how the hell did Feastables find my Instagram account? I really have no idea, but they asked if I would like to um, receive some chocolate to try it. And I was like, yeah, go on then. Because apparently they sell these in Asda now, but this is my favorite one. It's all right, you know, for American chocolate. I definitely mentioned this in the declutter, the Rare Beauty Loose Powder. Also, they were ahead of the game with the whole pink powder thing. Packaging is beautiful. I think I stopped using this because when I was filming with it, by the time I'd got to the end of my... Oh my God, it's flying around the room. Sorry about that. By the time I'd got to the end of filming, my skin was already oily again um, after like two hours of wearing it. So I think... That's why I stopped. Do my thing where I look insane. Take some on my powder puff and then just press that all under my eyes. Oh wow, it's quite a light powder. Mmm, it feels super dry under my eyes. I'm not sure how well, uh, oh, I hate that feeling. Wait a sec, I've just realized that my spotlights are on. That is not helpful. <laughs> I just tripped over my bin. Can you see what I mean? Like it's very, it feels very, very dry, which is really odd. Mm. Let's just set my eyelids as well. And obviously I'm gonna do the rest of my face, but that is a real shame. I kind of couldn't remember why I hadn't used it again, but maybe that was why. Maybe it's just the powder puff application because on the rest of my face, it's kind of just melting in. This is very random, but I'm just putting on a bit of lip gloss because my lips are really dry. What a shame. The powder bronzer, it is this. I actually found this in a makeup bag, which must have been a travel bag because look how skinny and light this product is. This is the Beauty Bay own brand bronzer. Actually, do they still sell these? I'm not 100% sure, but the shade Fawn. It doesn't have a mirror, but that's all right. I'm just gonna put this over where I put the cream bronzer. I still got questions, um, especially on TikTok of people saying, what is the point of you putting on cream bronzer, then powdering over it, and then putting on powder bronzer like it doesn't make any sense. I find that my makeup lasts a lot longer if I layer both of them. So I know that I do cover some of it with powder, a lot of it, but you can still see the, the bronzer and blush poking through a little bit. But I find that if I just do powder bronzer and powder blush, they fade a lot quicker than if I layer both of them on top of each other. And I also find that everything just blends together a bit more seamlessly. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if it does, but there you go. And then these are the Iconic London Silk Glow Duos. I don't need both, but how am I supposed to decide? That's the rosy glow. That's the coral glow. This is a really hard decision for me. I'm going to try the rosy glow first. Let's put this on this side. This one is giving like bridal beauty. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that is really lovely. And then this one. Watch me keep both of them. They're both just different vibes. This one's more like summery holiday. Actually, on my face, they don't look that different. <laughs> I think I prefer the coral one. Or do I prefer the pink one? I don't know, which one do you prefer? Sorry, I feel like I've asked you so many questions in this, but desperate times. I'm gonna just put the rest of that coral on my brush on the other cheek so that they match a little bit more. Oh, I don't know. The problem that I have is I prefer this highlighter, but I think I prefer the other blush. But let's take a little bit of that. 
highlighter. I have to say, Iconic London is a bit of an underdog. They have some really nice products. A lot of their skin products are really nice. For eyebrows, I found this while I was sorting out. The NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Mascara. And I've got the shade Ash Brown, I think. Oh no, the shade Taupe, actually. This stuff was so weird. It's like this really thick, hang on, this really thick, gloopy brow gel. And I saw this girl on TikTok just using this on her eyebrows and nothing else. It sticks your eyebrows in place, but also gives them a bit of colour. And it's supposed to be like a one step wonder why is there a hole in my eyebrow like what is that gap from mm, looks good so far but yeah there are so many products in my makeup collection that i will try in a video and i might really love them and then i'll either like put them away and just forget that they're there or there's sometimes things that i will love for like a solid month or two months and i think wow this product is incredible but then something new will come out and obviously because i'm testing new stuff all the time i will then find something new that i then start using and then because that's the most recent thing i'm using that instead but it doesn't mean that i don't like the products that I loved and used for like a few months. It's just that I kind of forget about them, which is really bad, isn't it? But I guess in a way, like that's the nature of my job. I am pretty much, my job title is like makeup, <laughs> makeup tester, makeup reviewer. So because I am testing so much, that's bound to happen, but it doesn't mean that I don't like these products. It's just that I forget that they exist. Oh yeah, this is the Kylie Kai Brow Pencil in Cool Brown. Again, really liked it when I first used it, put it away, forgot all about it. I think the main thing that I didn't like about that NYX product is that the brush is quite big, so it's a little bit messy. I really like how fluffy my eyebrows are looking. Oh shit, I'm supposed to be zooming with my family. I'll be right back. I had a quick little intermission while I spoke to my family for the past hour. My face has definitely started to get oily in the past like hour and a half that I've had this on my face. We're starting to like crease a little bit under my eyes. I'm kind of loving how my skin is looking, but I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more powder here. For my eyeshadow palette, I'm using this one from Made by Mitchell. I was digging through my collection and I was like, what haven't I used in a while? But this one was just speaking to me today. Don't know why, the mirror is completely smashed. I kind of want to use this like turquoise shade. Maybe a bit of this one. Maybe a bit of this one. I don't know why I set my eyelids. It was kind of an accident. So I'm just going to put on a little bit more concealer. I should probably go get an eye base, but this will do. Let's go for Cockpit, which is this brighter shade. This turquoise blue is very nice, very pigmented. Not too sure where I'm going with this look yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm also gonna put some of this on the outer corner. I've probably taken that a bit too high up, haven't I? Let's go for something rounded today, because I always do winged. We'll do something a little bit different. Then I'm gonna take the shade Bora Blue, this one, just to blend out the edges. Mitchell is absolutely killing it at the moment. Like his makeup brand has just exploded. And honestly, he is just such a nice person. Like he's always been so nice to everyone in the industry. And I feel like that's why he's got to where he is today because people can tell that he's like a genuinely nice person, you know? Yeah, I'm really, really, really proud of him and happy for all of his success and his products are awesome. So slay. Mitchell is taking a clean brush. I'm gonna take the shade which is called Twinkle and take some on my finger and I'm gonna put that in the center, which is almost like a bit of a backwards halo because usually you put the darker colors on the outer edges, which maybe I should do that, but this is a beautiful shade. And I'm mostly focusing that on the center, but I'm gonna like pat it out on the rest of my eyelid as well. I'm just taking a little bit of the white, which is called Waiter, just on the edges. Jesus, that is actually a really strong white eyeshadow. I was hoping it would kind of just blend into my skin tone. Then I'm gonna take the shade Cloudy, which is this white shimmer. And I'm just gonna put some of that on the center. And I'm also adding that to the inner corners as well. Just to like brighten it all up a little bit. Oh wait, maybe I go with this like reverse halo. Maybe I should put some of that on the outer corners. Nope, shouldn't have done that. I have just the product to fix this. I have this eyeliner from Kiko. It's the glitter eyeliner in 02. It's just like a silver glitter eyeliner. And I'm gonna use this to do some little patterns like over the top of this to make it look a bit more like spacey. That is not quite giving what I want it to give because I thought it would be like a silver liquid liner. I thought it was gonna be more pigmented, but it's more like a light wash of glitter. I'm not too sure that that's gonna work. I think this one from Glisten Cosmetics is a silver and gold, but I've not used it. So let's, let's try it. Kinda. I had this idea in my head of like molten silver, but this is more of like a white with some shimmer in it. I want this to look like the shooting star emoji. Do you know the one I'm on about? I sat outside for about an hour the other day just watching the shooting stars. Highly recommend. Well, I mean, I only saw three in like an hour, but it was worth it.
I need to switch brushes because this one is a bit big. I definitely need a shorter brush than this. Oh man, this is so fiddly. Usually I'm a huge fan of Glisten Cosmetics eyeliners, but this one in particular, it's not as pigmented and I feel like it's cracking a little more than usual. I'm gonna go over that with the Kiko Silver Glitter. Actually, I don't know if this is gonna make it worse. Okay, yeah, neither of those products are particularly my favorite. I feel like this Kiko glitter would be nice like over the top of some eyeshadow as like a wash of glitter, but not on its own as a liner. It's not really glittery or pigmented enough. I'm putting some of that on my inner corners. Okay, wait, why does it look so much more pigmented on my inner corners than it did on my bloody eyes? Oh, should I have left my lower lash line bare? Too late. Blend it out with some of that Bora blue. We got there in the end, but I'm not fully happy with this because the eyeliner is not as neat as I wanted it to be. I need to find like a molten silver eyeshadow because that's kind of what I had in my head. For mascara, I've got these two, which are both from Milk. And I can't remember if I liked either of them, the Kush mascara and the Rise mascara. So let's try both. We'll do one on each eye, see what I'm feeling. But I have a suspicion I maybe didn't like either of them that much. Otherwise, I would have used them again. This one is the Rise Mascara. I like the packaging, I think it's really cool. It's got this like rubber texture on the outside. Yeah, it's not really doing a whole lot for me. And then the Kush Mascara. I've got a massive brush. Just because it's a big brush does not mean it's gonna perform well. That one's a little bit clumpy and it's also not really doing much for my lashes. Yeah, no, nah, that's not it. It's too clumpy for me. I'm gonna use one that I actually like instead just because I gave those two a go. I will probably get rid of both of those actually. This is the New Benefit Mascara, which I have to say, I have really been enjoying the New Benefit Mascara. It does not transfer on me, whereas the Their Real Mascara from Benefit, I love that mascara, but it transfers on me. This one doesn't, it stays put all day. And then in my waterline, I'm taking one of these NYX eye pencils, the Epic Wear Liner Stick in the shade Blue Trip. I feel like I'm having to powder my face every 10 minutes. I love a glowy look, but not when it looks oily. Then for my setting spray, which I definitely should have done this before I just did my mascara, but I forgot. This is from Kiko. It's the Face Makeup Fixer. This stuff is like hairspray. It stinks of alcohol, but my God, does it stick your face on? And I've not used it in ages. I was using this like in COVID times when we were wearing masks and stuff. I actually think it might be hairspray in a can. Oh my god, ow, it went in my eye. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. I'm convinced that would actually work as hairspray, but... Oh my god, Abba who? I'm ready to go to Abba Voyage. Pretty cool, but not quite. Quite what I was going for, but it will do. We're nearly done, guys. For my lips, I've got these from Refai, which I forgot completely about, and I've got the shades Fawn, Taupe, and Rosewood. I think I need a more, like, brownie nude with this look. It's gonna be Taupe. I'm gonna go for Taupe. The main thing that put me off these lip liners is that the packaging is just a little bit too chunky. Like maybe if it was a lip liner and a lipstick, like is there anything in this section? I don't think there is. It's just like quite big to put in your bag for a lip liner. And then for my lipstick, I'm using this one from Fenty Beauty, the refillable lipstick. Again, I think the thing that puts me off this, which I love that it's refillable, but the packaging is so chunky, like it doesn't even fit in my lipstick organizers. It's really big if you wanna like put it in your handbag or something. So it's always just like in a different section of my makeup. So I just forget that I've got them. But this, ah, oh, that's the only thing. How do you tell which shade it is? Like once it's in there, I've got no idea how to tell. I'll try and find out. Mm, it does smell like the lip glosses. Oh, is that a bit too pink? Formula feels really nice, but my lips are actually really dry today. I need some gloss. Does anyone remember this? The Kathleen Lights and ColourPop Moonchild lip gloss. Hmm. And there we go. That is my finished face. You know what? There's a few things in here that I've definitely rediscovered and will be reusing, but the things that I will be decluttering from this video are both the mascaras, unfortunately. Oh, and the Rare Beauty Powder, which is such a shame. But the rest of the stuff I will continue to use. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for being patient with me with the whole reorganization of this room, but I think it's looking pretty cool. Like I'm happy with the background. Um, I might switch out the different signs maybe it's time to get some new ones i've seen one on amazon that are these like red lips which i thought might be pretty cool like to put here and on top of my lipstick cabinet however do you think red would be too distracting let me know this is the finished look i hope you guys are doing really good and i will see you shortly for my next video bye